We are on the cusp of another NFL season, and this year in 2020, we kick it off unlike any other in the 101-year history of the National Football League. This year, we will not be joined by fans, or if we are, we will be joined by very seldom in stadiums. We will be seeing new faces in different places, like Tom Brady in Tampa Bay, just for example, because that's the biggest one everybody knows about. And it's going to be... It's going to be a weird year, but it's also going to be a fun year, as it is every year. There's nothing I love more in this life than the game of football. It has given me so much. It has given me something to talk about every year with my friends, my family, and each and every one of you. So I just want to express my gratitude to the National Football League and the NFLPA for getting together and making sure that we could put this season together because uh, the show must go on. So, with all that pretense out of the way, let's start off the season the right way with the Houston Texans visiting the Kansas City Chiefs. So we all know about the Kansas City Chiefs. Their three come-from-behind victories in the postseason, including a 24-point comeback which led to a win against Houston. We know about what they did in that comeback against Tennessee. We know about what they did in the comeback in the Super Bowl against San Francisco. They are the best team in football. They, I don't expect to see Kansas City to show much regression because they are just that good. They are going to be that good for a long time. So if you're not a fan of Kansas City, you might as well go watch soccer uh, because Kansas City is going to be here for a long time. And Houston, on the other hand, they've done nothing but make bad decisions that I don't agree with. They keep giving Deshaun Watson less and less and less to work with. And it's super unfortunate because Deshaun Watson's one of the most talented players in the entire league. And Bill O'Brien consistently trades away his weapons to give him worse ones and trades away key players that hurt the team when they're gone. The offensive line has done nothing but go in the negative direction. Uh, without DeAndre Hopkins, the receiving core in Houston is not nearly as formidable as it was. And Deshaun Watson's going to have to do a significant amount of carrying if the Texans hope to get back to the postseason. Kansas City, on the other hand, they make everything look effortless. And they're probably going to on, on Thursday night. I don't expect to see Kansas City to lose this game. Uh, and I don't think the Texans are going to be able to make it close. So I have to pick Kansas City. Just their overwhelming offense and their defense. That is no slouch. Against the Houston team that has no direction. Against the Houston team that consistently does stupid things. So I'm going to have to pick Kansas City in this game. And I, I think most of the... The majority of people that follow this sport are going to have to agree with me. Then we advance to Sunday at 1 p.m. It's the Philadelphia Eagles <laughs> and, <laughs> and the Washington football team. I will never not laugh when I say that name. It is so ridiculous. Um, so Washington, they're bad. I mean... Dwayne Haskins' first NFL touchdown pass was to Jabril Peppers, who, by the way, plays safety for the New York Giants. Uh, Deshaun, wow, is I going to say Deshaun Watson again? Um, Carson Wentz, is who I'm talking about now, uh, is just based on their careers, the best quarterback currently in the NFC East. And I'm assuming that will soon change due to the guy that wears number eight and plays in New York. But... As of week one, because he plays before Daniel Jones will, Carson Wentz is the best quarterback going into week one in, in the uh, NFC East. And Washington just, they don't feel like a team that has an identity at the moment. Chase Young, like, cool, you drafted Chase Young. You drafted a kid that played on a great Ohio State team that disappeared in the two biggest games of his career against Wisconsin and Clemson. And frankly, I think he's extremely overrated. I, I don't expect good things to happen for Washington for a long time. Like, they're, they're just not good. 
I, I don't see any way that Washington comes out and puts together a season where people are like, huh, yeah, I can see them doing good things in the future. Like, if they beat Philadelphia week one, and I'll put my name on this, if they beat Philadelphia in the opener, I will pick Washington to win the Super Bowl. Because <laughs> I... <laughs> If they are able to come out and beat the Eagles, then they might just be the greatest team to ever step foot on a gridiron. F frankly, I, I don't see it any other way. It's either they're the greatest thing ever, or they will be exactly what I think they are. Philadelphia has won six consecutive games against Washington. This will not change on Sunday. I'm picking the Philadelphia Eagles. Then in the next game, the New York Jets will go to Buffalo. And unfortunately, there will be no tables being lit on fire. There will be no people being thrown off of trailers. Well, hopefully people go and tailgate, even though they're not allowed in the game. I would love to still see Bills fans do their crazy Bills fan thing, but that's all I want to do in my life is go to a Bills game and get put through a table, genuinely. Um, but the Jets, uh, I can't believe we're still having this conversation about who's the better quarterback, Sam Darnold or Josh Allen. To me, this is a no-brainer. This isn't even a debate. Josh Allen is far and away the best quarterback in the AFC East. Sam Darnold is objectively the worst quarterback in that division, and he is in the bottom of the entire league. He's the only one of the 32 quarterbacks that ever saw ghosts <laughs> while on the football field, and he said it. I was there in that building when he said that, as the Patriots destroyed them last season. And the Bills, they've done nothing but get better. And if you've seen in um, in training camp, now that they have Stephon Diggs, Diggs is making Josh Allen better as they play together. I'm so excited to see what they do on offense. The Bills are going to be a unit to look out for in the AFC playoff race. And frankly, I, I think that they... they they're going to win the division. They're probably going to make it at least to the divisional round. Um, maybe an AFC championship is in their future. I don't want to, you know, count my chickens before they're hatched, but I like the Bills. I like them a lot, and I dislike the Jets a great deal, and I, I have to pick Buffalo. Next up, we have the Raiders, the Las Vegas Raiders, and the... Carolina Panthers, Teddy Bridgewater, 16-6 and six as a starter since 15. And I believe that number will go to 17-6. and six. Uh, The Raiders, it seemed like they were more focused on getting John Gruden in the building, in the building, and Mike Mayock in the building, than actually putting together a roster that can compete. Um, I, I don't like a lot of what they're doing offensively. Like, I had them pegged for big things if Mariota played, but now Mariota is going to be absent uh, because he's on IR. So, I, I, don't, I don't have any faith. I have no faith in the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, I think they're going to finish probably last in their division, honestly. I don't, I don't see how they could not finish last. It's, <laughs> uh, but then Carolina, they still have overrated Christian McCaffrey. They have Teddy Bridgewater. They have DJ Moore. Um, they're going to be a, a good unit. The defense, it's a, it's a little questionable at the moment, but you never know how a team plays until ball is in the air, you know? So I like Carolina in this game as much as I don't like them as a team. I'll pick them. I'll pick them. Then we have the Chicago Bears visiting the Detroit Lions. Um, good news for Lions fans, probably the best thing you've heard all year, Mitchell Trubisky is starting for Chicago. <laughs> Genuinely, I have nothing more to say about this game than Mitchell Trubisky is starting for the Chicago Bears. That should inform you of my opinion and probably the general consensus throughout the entire league. Um, as long as Mitchell Trubisky is playing and starting, the Bears are not going to do anything. Um, that, like When they went to the playoffs with Trubisky, do you think they were going to win the Super Bowl based on his arm? No, they were going to win the Super Bowl because Khalil Mack was going to eat people alive. And unfortunately, they got double-doinked. 
Sorry, Bears fans. Uh, I, I know, I know. People still remind me of the miracle at the Meadowlands, so I understand. But yeah, Detroit. I love Kenny Galladay. Fuck. I, I, I love him. I almost swore right there, but I caught myself. That's how much I, I love Kenny Galladay. I think he's a fantastic player. Um, he's, he's a highlight of that team, and I've been watching him for his entire career. Followed him in the preseason. He impressed me immensely in the preseason, his, his rookie year. Um, I, I'm very Im impressed with Detroit. I think that uh, Matt Patricia needs to watch out, though, because if he can't get his players to buy in, then he's going to be on the out. Uh, they, they need to show marginal improvement this year in order for Patricia to keep his job. Uh, I, and, and hopefully they do. I, I'm a, I've always been a fan of, of Detroit. Everybody knows this. Uh, objectively, I don't think that they're the second, even the second best team in their division, but I think that they are going to be good enough to beat Chicago week one, so I'll pick Detroit. Then we have the Cleveland Browns and the Baltimore Ravens. Cleveland has not won in week one since 2004. I was quite a young man back in 2004. So Cleveland, um, what is there to say about Cleveland? They have looked so bright on both sides of the ball for so long, and they continue to disappoint. If, you, if you've been following my channel and my yearly predictions for long enough, you'll know that Cleveland, I've always been high on them. And every year I say, this is the year. This is the year Cleveland will impress. This is the year they're going to the playoffs. This is the year that they'll do better. I just, I can't anymore. I, I can't sit here and be like Joaquin Phoenix and Joker and put my makeup on every year for 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 Cleveland. They're bad. <laughs> Baker Mayfield is no bueno. He's no bueno. In Baltimore, on the other hand, they're probably the best regular season team in the league. Clearly, Kansas City is the best playoff team in the league. But Baltimore, they'll beat you. They'll beat you any way you can be beat. They'll beat you defensively. They'll throw on you. They'll run on you. They'll do anything. And they will, they will win a lot of games. But, um, yeah, Cleveland, man. I don't know. I don't know what they need. Because if, if they're stuck on Baker Mayfield, then they might be stuck in obscurity for a while. Even longer than they have been for their entire existence. But they, they need to figure out something fast at quarterback because their their roster is too good to be wasted with a with a bad quarterback. So I hope Kevin Stefanski did something during the offseason to, to get the team into gear because I want to see them do well. Genuinely, I do, but I can't do this anymore. Year in and year out, I put all my stock into them, but I can't. Until you've proven anything, you will always be... The Cleveland Browns that went 0-16. A bad football team. So prove to me that you're not that team. And prove to me, with your play on the field, not just the people you sign and trade for, that you're a good football team. And I will I will, I will, will gladly, gladly start singing the praises again. It, there was no praises to even be sung. And I was singing them. I was indoctrinated by something. I don't know what it was. Maybe I just maybe I like watching train wrecks. I think everybody does on a subconscious level. I don't know, but Baltimore is winning this game, and they're gonna win big. Then we have Indianapolis and Jacksonville. Philip Rivers is making his Indianapolis debut. Um, Jaguars. What is there to say, man? That 2017 team that I thought was winning the Super Bowl. You can go back and watch the videos. I thought they were winning the Super Bowl. They don't. They have what four players left from that roster? From that whole roster on their team? The Colts are gonna win this game, man. Uh, Jacksonville. Like I like Gardner Minshew. I think a lot of people like Gardner Minshew, but I also like teams that win football games. Um, and they're not gonna do a whole lot of that. They have a legit shot of going 0-16. I just I feel bad for Jags fans. I mean, not because you know you were bad but because of the way that your your management has treated your top players and, and the players that got you a game away from a Super Bowl 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going with Indianapolis. I'm going with Philly Riv, T.Y. Hilton, Darius Leonard. Going with the Colts. As much as I hate to say it, because I hate the Colts, but, you know, sometimes the hardest choices require the strongest wills. Then the Seahawks and the Falcons. Matt Ryan is actually 5-2 and two in his career against Seattle. That includes a lot of games against Russell Wilson. Because uh, Ryan's only been in the league since, what, 08? And Wilson came in in, in in 11 or 12. So they've been playing against each other for quite some time. And Matt Ryan, people like to talk all the smack about Matt Ryan. But look at the stats. Please do. Compare last season to his MVP year. And, and then you'll know. And then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that Matt Ryan is not a bad quarterback. In fact, he's one of the better ones in the league. Just look at his stats, and then it speaks for itself. Please do. But Seattle, I think that they're probably going to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. I think they're that good. Uh, obviously, we don't know anything until they play, but I, I really like Seattle. They prove me wrong every year. Every year, I'm like, I don't know. They're not the Legion of Boom. They don't have Doug Baldwin. But then Russell Wilson just says, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I'll do it anyway. Um... I like them. I like them a lot. I'm going to pick them to win this game. Uh, as much as Atlanta has done to improve their offense, I don't think it'll be enough. They'll probably have a very good year outside of this one game. But every week, of course, I look at things in a one-week bubble. And in this one-week bubble, Atlanta will lose. I'm picking Seattle. Then the Dolphins and the Patriots. People, relax. The Patriots dynasty isn't over. You're fooling yourself. They are the only team ever in the history of the game to go from a league MVP at quarterback to a league MVP at quarterback in the same offseason. Cam Newton is healthy. He is red D. He's got Nikhil Harry and Julian Edelman. That offense is going to be good. They can do inventive things now with a running quarterback. They've never been able to do that under Bill Belichick. Ever. And now they've got one, they've got a former league MVP. Look at your team and tell me if your team has a league MVP on it. My guess is it don't. Miami, though, they're not starting to attack a Viola. They're going to trot out Ryan Fitzpatrick. And frankly, I think we're going to see some Fitz magic week one. Um, I think it's going to take a, a game or two for Cam and the Patriots to get rolling. But once they do, I think that we're going to see the same thing we've seen for years. The same thing we saw when Matt Castle started all those games and went, what, 11-5 and five and came a game away from the playoffs. Um, yeah, I just, I like Miami in this game. As a, as a week one surprise, Miami has done such a great job of building a strong core roster of, of young, capable players that a lot of people are sleeping on. And I think that they're going to wake... They're gonna wake America and the entire NFL up on Sunday when they beat when they beat uh, New England. Then we have the Packers and the Vikings. This is the first time ever the Packers are visiting Minnesota in Week One. I did not know that. It's a very interesting statistic. However, I don't think it's gonna help Minnesota any. I still think that they're going to be owned by Daddy Aaron Rodgers, the best pure thrower of the football ever. That is not up for debate. He is the he has the best pure arm talent in the history of the game. Eventually, at some point, I think Patrick Mahomes will su will uh, supersede that. But as of right now, he is still the best pure thrower ever. And the Packers, while they haven't done much to give Aaron Rodgers a chance to win a Super Bowl, they are coming off an NFC Championship game in which they lost to the eventual uh, runner-ups which is all you can really ask for. If you're going to lose in the playoffs, you might as well lose to one of the Super Bowl teams. So that way at least you know, you know, you didn't lose the, the, the scrub that got eliminated the next week. That'd be embarrassing. <laughs> Buffalo. Um, yeah, but I like, I like uh, Green Bay in this game. I always do. I like Green Bay in division games. I just, Aaron Rodgers is an enigma. He is, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. He's one of the greatest to ever do it. And certainly against this Minnesota Vikings team that has only gotten worse with the loss of Stefan Diggs. So I'm taking Green Bay. Then the Chargers and the Bengals. 
I don't want to talk about Joe Burrow. He's overrated. Dude couldn't start at Ohio State, and he only started on an LSU team that needed a quarterback, and that team was already loaded to begin with. So he was pretty much a byproduct of his situation, and then still decided that he had this massive chip on his shoulder for no reason. He's so overrated, man, and, and I cannot wait for people to see this because it's it's ridiculous to me how people think that Joe Burrow is so good when he really isn't. It's 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 going to make me very happy when Joe Burrow throws five interceptions in, in this first game. But no, I think that his ego won't allow him to throw that many times, so I think that he'll just uh, he'll keep it short, he'll keep it sweet, he'll probably throw 25 passes, he'll probably only complete... 43% of them is my guess and he'll probably have one touchdown no picks because he's going to be too afraid to throw into any sort of coverage like I'm doing right here to Chris Godwin and he caught it anyway what a goat um, yeah and then the Chargers they're starting Tyrod Taylor uh, they've got Mike Williams they just signed uh, I know wasn't it Keenan Allen um, and their defense I like their defense I always have I think that they're going to be a good unit uh, I just don't think that they're well they're Obviously the best L.A. team in the NFL. I think that goes without saying. But, uh, yeah, I think people need to need to do a little bit of waking up on, on L.A., at least the Chargers anyway. I like them. I think they've somehow gotten better with the absence of Phillip Rivers. I think that that limit has come off of the, the roof now. Like if Justin Herbert, when he eventually plays, is what you know, he can be, then I think that they've removed their limit. Their limit was Phillip Rivers, and now that's gone. So, we'll see. Only time will tell. But I'm picking uh, I'm picking the Chargers in this game. Uh, the Bengals are a bad team. Then we have the Buccaneers and the Saints. So Tom Brady is 14-3 and in Week 1. All time in his career. And look, I bought in four years to the Saints. I was fooled by them. I was hoodwinked. I was tricked. I was bamboozled. They are snake oil merchants. Drew Brees is a snake oil merchant. They are overrated. They cannot finish. Drew Brees has an, a clutch gene akin to mine. It's non-existent. The dude is not an MVP caliber quarterback and I think a lot of times I used to say it's ridiculous how can they not vote for Drew Brees for MVP but I think that's the the times when the voters have gotten it right he's not an MVP look at his play dude doesn't throw the deep ball and it shows because they don't win anything yeah they win the NFC South good for you is, is that a ring Do you get a ring for winning the NFC South is it a Tom Brady's face on it now? I don't know. You tell me. They're snake oil merchants. They're frauds. They're not a team that can legitimately contend for championships. And people need to start realizing that. New Orleans looks bad consistently twice to three times a year. Like bad. Like really bad. Against teams that they shouldn't. Go back and look at it. You can look. I'm not just lying to you. Go look. And you'll be like, oh, well, uh. no, they are snake oil merchants. They're frauds. <laughs> they should be able to be taken to court for the amount of lying they do to the general public. In Tampa Bay, we all, come on, I don't have to sit here and run you down all their additions. They've got Tom Brady. they got Gronk. You already know they have Evans and Godwin. Now they have Fournette and McCoy and Ronald Jones. And a good offensive line. An offensive line that allowed Jameis Winston to throw for 30 touchdowns. I don't know. I don't know. Bucks are an enigma. They can either be the, the greatest team ever because this roster is better than the 16-0 Patriots. Or they can come out and completely shit the bed because they don't have Bill Belichick running, running the team and Tom Brady's a system quarterback. We'll find out. But Bruce Arians is a quarterback guru. That's what I've been told for years. So... Only one way to find out, and that's to touch the field on Sunday afternoon. But I'm going to pick Tampa Bay. Uh, and, and trust me, Saints fans, I know you're going to have a good regular season record. 
and you're going to laugh at me and say, oh, we're going to the playoffs, the Giants aren't. Uh, I don't care. You're not going to win anything. Snake freaking oil merchants, and I'm sick and tired of people claiming that the Saints are so good. They're not. Going with Tampa Bay. Then we have the Arizona Cardinals and the San Francisco 49ers. The Niners, I do believe, are going to experience a massive Super Bowl hangover. Um, when you when you blow a Super Bowl like that, we saw it with Atlanta. And Atlanta's was worse. But when you blow a Super Bowl like that, it's just hard. It's hard to mentally get yourself back in that situ in that in that headspace where you're like, yeah, we're unbeatable. You know, like we're we're untouchable. We got this. It's hard. Hard to do that. And unfortunately they they went from having one of the best looking rosters with a great defense to an offense that has so many question marks outside of Garoppolo. And even he is a question mark. We saw him overthrow Emmanuel Sanders in the Super Bowl. That that could have changed the game. But he overthrew him. He airmailed him in the end zone. You gotta at least give your guy a chance. Like I know I know Garoppolo. He didn't want to throw a pick. He didn't want to be the guy to throw the interception to lose the Super Bowl. But you gotta give Emmanuel Sanders a shot at that football. In Arizona, they've done nothing but get better. And I am so jealous that they have Isaiah Simmons and Shaq, or I'm sorry, not Shaq Barrett, and Chandler Jones. And, and look at them on offense. They've got DeAndre Hopkins and Kyler Murray and Larry Fitzgerald. I, I am such a big fan of the Arizona Cardinals, I might just die. I love what they've done. I think they're going to be one of the better teams in the league. They're going to show massive turnaround. I think they'll do a complete 180 from last season. Kyler Murray is only going to get better. He's, he's got the, what do they call it, the it factor. Um, I'm picking I'm picking Arizona. I think uh, the Super Bowl hangover is going to be real for San Francisco. They don't have to force Buckner on that, on that line, and that's that's going to that's gonna hurt. It's going to hurt him. And they're going to be hurt by, uh, by Arizona. Then Sunday night football hits. We've got the Dallas Cowboys and the LA Rams. So this game's really a coin toss. Both these rosters are, are kind of iffy. I mean, LA's is, is very suspect. It's very bad. But, like, in Dallas, their teams always look good on paper. But then they come out and they're bad. Like, they half the games they play, they look bad. And you know why? It's because their quarterback just, just can't seem to play quarterback well. Like, yeah, he throws for all these yards. I don't care. Carson Wentz is better. <laughs> um, but I'm going to take the Cowboys for all the all the smack that I talk. I don't think that the Rams are <laughs> good at all. So i, I got to give it to Dallas week one. There you go, Cowboys fans. That's all you get out of me. You get one nice thing said, and that's you're better than the Rams. Then Monday night. The Monday night. Uh, kickoff game of the doubleheader will be the Steelers and the Giants at 7-10. You all know I'm the world's biggest New York Giants fan. It's probably a lie, but I try to be the world's biggest New York Giants fan. If I was rich, I would look like the world's biggest New York Giants fan. Let's just put it that way. I would have so many Giants-themed random things. Um, <laughs> and of Giants-themed forks. Um... Yeah, the Steelers, they're going to be good. It's all dependent on if Ben Roethlisberger is as healthy as, as he per was perceived to be in training camp. And the Giants, uh, well, I don't want to say they enter the season with a lot of question marks because legitimately the defense entering last season was significantly worse than the defense that's entering this year. And, yeah, we, we lost Xavier McKinney for maybe half the year with the fractured foot and that's a big blow that's a big blow but um i think that the 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 team has already bought into the head coach which is which is crucial and we've got the same offensive coordinator that led Dak Prescott and and Ezekiel Elliott to break all those records in 2016 Jason Garrett um if you look at Miami's defense last year while they were a bad unit Patrick Graham's defense was good. 
there's a lot to look forward to if you're a Giants fan and and I'm just hoping that we don't come out of the gate slow like we need to, to have some inventive offense to come out and, and punch teams that are significantly better than us in the face and give us a legit shot because Daniel Jones should have been second in rookie of the year polling behind Kyler Murray in my opinion that's what it should have been Murray Jones um, and the Giants they've got an offense that looks pretty good it looks pretty good. I think it. I honestly think the Giants' offense looks better than the Steelers' offense. Uh, but it all depends on if our breakout wide receiver plays the way he did last year, Darius Slayton. So we'll see. Uh, I gotta pick the Giants in Week One, purely because I'm a Giants fan. I don't want to come out in Week One and say we're gonna lose. I don't think I've. I don't think I've ever said. And in this series, in this prediction series, that I've been doing for years that the Giants were gonna lose a Week One game. And I think I've only gotten it right <laughs> one time. So, yeah, I'm going to pick the Giants again. Uh, I cannot wait for this game. I just, I more so can't wait to get it over with because I'm so stressed out right now just thinking about it. <laughs> it's not even funny. So I'm going to pick the New York Giants. And then we move on to the final game of week one at 10-20. The Tennessee Titans and the Denver Broncos. So... Denver and Drew Locke went 4-1 and one when Locke started. That's that's great. That's great. Now they're without Von Miller. He's going to be gone for the year. And Tennessee got to Davy and Clown. They re-signed their quarterback. They re-signed their, their star running back. Uh, they look kind of scary. Do they look poised for another, um, for another run down there to the AFC Championship game? I don't know. I'm not going to make any bold predictions on that yet. But I like Tennessee. I like them a lot. And I like them better than Denver. Now, I, th I think Denver's going to have a good year. I do. Because I think Drew Locke is good. But I think Tennessee's just going to have a better game. And they're going to win. So there you have it. That was week one. I can't believe it. It's already here. I didn't think we were going to have football this year. And I'm so, so eternally grateful for the powers that be. Yeah, sure. All they want is money. I know that. But I'm grateful that they, they got it together and they were able to put football on this year. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please, if you could, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. It really it just gives me the incentive to continue to make videos for you guys. For you guys and girls. For all of you. Whatever you, whatever you prefer to be called. I love every single one of you. Truly. Uh, the people that watch these videos are the people that make it worth it. And I wouldn't be doing it if nobody if nobody watched. So I just I can't thank you guys enough uh, f for all these years for giving me such a platform to speak about football on. <laughs> like who who would, have, who would have ever thought that years ago I would be sitting here annually talking about football to a microphone? Um, I don't know. But I, I couldn't be more happy about it. So thank you all so much. Uh, if you could, just, just please hit that subscribe button. It's It would be genuinely heartfeltly... That's not a word. It would be genuinely appreciated from the bottom of my heart. Uh, and, and if you could, please um, share this with your football friends. Let's try to get a conversation in the comments. I, I want to see that viewer interaction. Maybe I'll make a Discord. Maybe we can all get in a Discord and play Madden and, and talk about football. I think that'd be awesome. Just want to get some community involvement in a good, productive, healthy way about this sport. So yeah, that's going to do it for me. I will catch each and every one of you fine folks next week as we kick off week two. So please have fun, stay safe, enjoy all the games on Thursday and Sunday and Monday. I know I will because football is my favorite thing in the world. So thanks so much again, and I will catch you guys next week.